Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and the IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to be doing installment number 17 and we're going to be taking a look at the spectrum scope operation in section 5 in the manual. This one's been a long time in coming, so let's get right to it. One of the coolest features about the 7300 is the spectrum scope. This is something that prior to the 7300 was typically only available on really high-end radios. And the 7300 is considered an entry-level radio, so to have a spectrum scope with the kind of capability that this one has is really remarkable and a very nice feature. I've reset the radio to all of the default settings here. So this is the way the spectrum scope will appear when you first take it out of the box. And we'll start right on page 5.2 and we'll just go through the basic uh, selections that you have for the scope. So on the left touch function here you've got a 1 and you can press the 1 and you get a 2 because there are two sets of functions that you can access. You've got edge, hold, center, fix, and expand, and set. So let's go through those. The edge button selects the band edges when you are in fixed mode. The scope is in fixed mode right now. I'm on 80 meters, and you can see that right now the edges are set from 3.5, which is shown up there. Let me get that off of there and 4.0 at the top end. So this is looking at the entire 80 meter band. If I tap the edge button, I get a different edge, which is now basically the CW portion of the band from 3.5 to 3.575. And then the other predefined edge is from 3750 to 3850, um, one of the more popular sideband segments of the band. And then if I tap it again, it goes back to the whole band. Now these are the three preset edges for 80 meters. You can change those if you want different sets of edges. We'll talk about that in a little while, probably in the next episode. Uh, the next button is hold, which is just as you would think. If you press hold, it holds the scope and stops updating the scope with wherever that last was and press it again and it starts running again. Center fix is to choose center mode or fixed mode. So we're in fixed mode now as I said, you see the entire band, and you can see over here the green line. That is where I am currently tuned, 3828, and you can see we're just above 3.8 here. So if I start tuning, the green line will move to my current frequency. So this is fixed mode. The scope uh, frequencies are fixed on the screen, and then it just shows you where you are on the scope. If we go to center mode, now the frequency that I'm tuned to is always the center of the scope. So you can see it moving, and then, of course, here's a, well, it was a sideband signal. Uh, there we go. Let's see if we find somebody else here. Your, of your whole okay. so just to, and now you notice here that on this signal the audio spectrum or the the width of the signal is on both sides of the center so the center frequency here is actually looking at the center of the filter bandwidth for the radio. We'll talk about that in a little more detail also. Now when you're in center mode, you notice this was edge when I was in fixed mode. And when I went to center mode, which it tells you up here center or fix by the way, so you can see that on the scope also, if the other clues aren't enough for you. When you're in 
center mode, the edge changes to span, and you see here that we are plus and minus 10 kilohertz, so we're looking 10 kilohertz either side of our current signal. If you press span, it jumps up to 25. The next step is 50, then 100 kilohertz, 250 kilohertz, plus and minus 500 kilohertz, and then it goes back down to 2.5 where you're pretty much looking at a single signal here. And then there's a five, and then the default was plus and minus 10. Then the final button down here is expand and set. If you just touch it, it expands the scope, so it takes up a much larger part of the screen. Touch it again, and it goes back down. So you see more waterfall here, so you can, uh, you know, if you're looking for signals and you're kind of watching one part of the band, and you can, you can still catch something that was over here earlier. So the expand gives you, and it also gives you a larger graph up here for signal strength. And then if you touch and hold, then this takes you to the scope setting screens. And then we'll go through these uh, in a, at a future point here. Let's go back to the, the main menu functions or the main front screen functions first. So then I'm going to go to the second set of functions. And on the second page, you've got reference, speed, marker, and then the expand and set stays. That's the same on both screen one and screen two. So reference is the reference level for the scope. The default is 0 dB, which is basically the reference level for the very top of the scope. Um, so as you turn it up, it's kind of counterintuitive. The reference level being plus 20 dB. I'm sorry, I have this backwards. It's the reference level for the bottom of the scope. So as I turn it up, my, I'm, my signals appear stronger. And if I go the other way, my signals appear weaker. So you'll only see the very strongest signals. So it's, it is a little bit counterintuitive here. Um, but, you know, if, you're, if you've got a very quiet background, you may want to turn the reference level up so you can see more signals. If you have a very noisy background, as I do here, you may want to actually turn the reference level down so you can spot signals. The disadvantage of this is weaker signals may not actually come up to the level where you'll see them on the scope. So we're going to just leave it at zero for now. Then speed is the speed of the waterfall. So let's expand this so you can see that a little better. The default is fast, which is what we're on right now. And you see the little three arrows here? That tells you the speed is fast. If I change it to mid, it's two arrows. And you can see that the waterfall has slowed down. It also slows down the update rate for the actual signal strength up here as well. And then if I go to slow, you only have one arrow. And then now you can see it's updating eh, about one and a half times a second, just a little more than once a second maybe. So I leave it on fast. I don't really have a lot of use for mid or slow because um, I want to watch things in a little bit more real time. And then the next one over is marker. And marker on center mode... Uh, hang on, let me go back to fixed mode. So, uh, in fixed mode, you've got the green marker, and then all this does is turn on or off the transmit marker. So if I do marker, you see a T, and the R is green, so the green line is your receive frequency. The brown line, which is sort of it's a dashed line it's in between it is your transmit frequency and you will also see that on center mode so what this shows you so for example if I go to RIT and I start shifting you'll see my receive frequency is over there and in fact for this example let's go to um, the center mode so if I do 
RIT, I'm shifting my receive frequency up, so my transmit frequency is now down below. And if I go the other way and shift my transmit, excuse me, my receive frequency down, you can see my transmit frequency is higher. And I'll show you what all that touchscreen stuff is in a minute. Uh, but that's what the marker function does. And then expand set is the same on both screens, as I mentioned. So that's the main settings that you have on the two main pages for the scope. Okay, so we've gone through the basics. Let's take a look at some of the subtleties of a couple of these functions and the way they operate on the scope. So, first of all, the marker, which when you're in fixed mode, you see the green line here for where I'm receiving. If you tune, and actually let's go to a different edge. So now I'm on 3750 to 3850 for my scope edges. If you tune past that, you can of course keep tuning, but my marker is now out of the range of the scope edges and you'll notice that two little green arrows showed up here on the right to tell me that my transmit or my, my frequency that I'm tuned to is that way. And then, of course, if I come down the other way, you see the two arrows show up over here. So if you're in fixed mode and you don't see your marker on the screen, look for the arrows, and that'll show you where you are. Of course, you can look at the frequency display and the frequency you're actually tuned to and hopefully figure that out as well. And then let's go back to the full band here. And another thing about the hold function, and this was actually one of the viewers sent this in, uh, and his call escapes me right now, I apologize, but one of the viewers sent this in as a hint. If you press the hold button, the scope freezes, but the marker frequency position is actually still live. And so let me see if I can uh, hold it on a couple of good peaks. So there's a, a nice peak signal there, so you can actually tune up to where that is. In a, there we go. And, and that was about where the peak was, and then, of course, if you, um, whoops, sorry about that. Um, so you can, you can use the hold function to find signals and then tune to where you see them on the scope, which is kind of a nice feature, and if we go down to... And I'm not tuning these in real carefully right now, so I apologize. But that's another nice feature that you have when you do the hold. Your marker position is still live. There's a lot more to cover on the Spectrum Scope, but I'm trying to keep these episodes to no more than 10 to 15 minutes each. So we're going to have to pause here, and we will pick this up the next time and continue on with spectrum scope operation. Until then, I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.